Double and add, square and multiply. Here's the puzzle. Given an integer, to come up with a way to gradually build that number up from zero using only two possible operations, adding one or doubling. There are lots of paths to try, some long and some short. So let's add a restriction to do it using the operations as few times as possible. A famous answer to this puzzle is known as double and add, or sometimes as square and multiply, depending on the context. It's useful in all sorts of situations where you want to compute something efficiently. For example, you might come across this puzzle if you want to compute a big power of a number modulo n, or a multiple of a point on an elliptic curve. I'm not going to focus on applications right now, just on the puzzle itself, and the algorithm which solves it. Let's make it a bit more concrete. Let's say you are given a number to reach, like 106. You start with 0, and you're allowed to either double or add 1. Every time you do one of these operations, there's a clap of thunder and the house shakes, so you want to do this as few times as possible. You could solve this by just adding 1 106 times, but the thunderclaps might reduce your house to rubble by then. In fact, I can do it in just 10 operations. Add, double, add, double, double, add, double, double, add, double. How did I find this very efficient chain of operations? I used a trick. I just worked backward. Instead of trying to build up to 106, I try to unravel it instead. If I have 106, what was the operation I most likely did to get there? Well, it's even, so I probably just doubled. Doubling gets me farther faster than adding one, so I want to do as much of it as possible after all. So this is sort of kind of like a greedy algorithm. Now, 53 is odd, so I can't have just doubled. I must have added one. Then 52 is even again, so I'll guess that I just doubled. Working the backwards this way, I eventually get to zero. So here's the system I'm proposing. If n is even, then have it. In other words, the opposite of doubling. If n is odd, then subtract 1, the opposite of adding 1. When I get to 0, stop. So a little aside here, this is a sort of dynamical system where we keep iterating this process. You might be familiar with the Colatz conjecture, which concerns a kind of similar system. I'll call this one unraveling my number, 106, to knit it back up I can just do it all backward. The knitting up instructions actually give a solution to the whole puzzle that I asked at the beginning about how to build 106 with few operations. So did we just get lucky, or can you always unravel a number like this? It turns out this process is quite a bit better behaved than something like Colette's. Here are some example paths. They always take you to zero. Can you see why? Doubling and subtracting one both make you smaller, and one or the other is always dictated. So the process can't go forever, and it can't stop unless it hits zero. So at this point, we've got our double and add algorithm. Given a number, I unravel it, and then the building instructions are just its knitting up code. This may not be a totally satisfactory answer, though, because the unraveling process is cumbersome. So the last piece of the puzzle is to find a way to write down the unraveling code, or equivalently the knitting up code, without doing all the math. Can you predict the code without computing it? Well, let's take a look at our unraveling and knitting, but let me write the numbers in binary. Now just pause the video and stare at this. Seriously, just stare at it. So what's the lesson here? Binary loves doubling and adding one. Or from another perspective, it loves halving and subtracting one. They're beautiful operations from the perspective of binary. When binary sees if my number is even, have it, it thinks if my number ends in a zero, drop the zero. When it sees if my number is odd, subtract one, it thinks if my number ends in 1, change the 1 to a 0. Seriously, binary can't get enough of this stuff. So if you've written your number in binary, to unravel it, you just read the binary from right to left. If you see a 0, you drop it. That's halving. If you see a 1, you change it to a 0, and then you drop it. That's subtract 1 and then halving. It's convenient to group the subtract and have it the operation into one thing, since it corresponds nicely to chopping off one digit. It's just a convenience, but a very nice and natural one. So if we keep going step by step in this manner, we eventually reach zero. So the binary expansion of a number just is the unraveling instructions. But since knitting is just unraveling backwards, we have the knitting code too. To read the knitting instructions, we read the binary from left to right. The rules are, start with the number 0, 
If you see a digit zero, you double the number, and if you see a digit one, you double and add. First is a one, so we double. Doubling doesn't do anything, and add one. Then we see a one again, so we double and add. Then a zero digit, so we double. Then a one, double and add. Then a zero, so we double. Then a one, double and add. Then a zero, so we double, and we're done. That's it. So that's where double and add comes from. If you follow the development here, you should never need to memorize anything. Just write your number in binary and unravel it, and the algorithm kind of shines forth. So we also actually quickly get an analysis of the runtime of the algorithm. The total number of operations is the number of digits, how often we double, plus the number of ones. That's how often we add. So I leave it to you. Is this really the best algorithm possible? Could you do something even more efficient, maybe for some special types of numbers? And finally, if you were intrigued by the tree of unravelings, it's to be found on the ever-fascinating online encyclopedia of integer sequences, and I'll leave a link in the description below.